Hello, my name's Paul Hewitt and today we're going to have a look at model coordination in BIM Collaborate and Navisworks. Clash detection is often handled by one power user, causing bottlenecks in the model coordination process and unnecessary attention is given to low value manual work. Information silos and disconnected workflows can cause excessive time spent on manual processes and missed perspectives from the broader project team reduces the overall quality of the handover documents. So, how do we overcome these limitations? When surveyed, general contractors say the highest value use case for BIM in construction is model coordination and clash detection. So automatic clash detection done by the entire team frees up a BIM manager's scarce time to focus on high level clashes. Continuous collaboration allows teams to address issues in real time instead of waiting for the next coordination meeting. A common data environment improves design visibility and ensures teams are working from a single source of truth. Autodesk BIM Collaborate empowers project teams to align and execute on design intent and constructability by managing the entire design. Collaboration and coordination processes, including model review, issue management, change analysis and clash detection within a single cloud-based solution in a common data environment to reduce rework, improve productivity and accelerate, accelerate project delivery. Autodesk BIM Collaborate leverages advanced automation for clash detection, empowering design and trade teams to self-check their work and improve the quality of construction doc documentation. Also, this enables the BIM lead to focus on most important constructability issues. Inherent collaboration functionality from design to construction keeps the entire project team on the same page collaborating effectively to reduce the number of design issues that reach the site. The connection between teams, projects and businesses don't end with Autodesk BIM Collaborate. Autodesk BIM Collaborate is just part of a unified platform for the Autodesk Construction Cloud. The Autodesk Construction Cloud connects data, workflows and teams throughout the entire building lifecycle from design to operation across the headquarters, office, and on the job site. We recently announced three new additions to the Autodesk Construction Cloud, Autodesk Build, Autodesk Takeoff, and Autodesk BIM Collaborate. Built on a unified platform and common data environment, the new modules empower general contractors, special trades, designers, and owners to drive better business outcomes. BIM Collaborate has everything you need to manage design review and model coordination. But keep in mind our BIM Collaborate Pro offering if co-authoring designs is part of your workflow. So now we'll have a look at BIM Collaborate and Navisworks together. When we've created our project in the Autodesk Construction Cloud, we make sure we're in that project First, we'll start in the document management section. In here, we create our project files folders for each team. So if we look at the architectural team, they also have a coordination space created. We can't use this yet until it's been set up. But we also have a really important area where we have the shared folders and a shared coordination space. If we look at each of these folders, this is where our work in progress is generally created. Again, under the MEP, again, they have their own MEP coordination space, and this is where their files will be stored. We can also put those files in the coordination space so we can actually do some coordination. In the shared coordination space, each team will add their file when it's ready. Now if we move to model coordination, the first thing we'll need to do is actually create some coordination spaces. So although the folders exist, the actual coordination spaces haven't actually been configured. So we pick create, 
give the coordination space a name. I generally use the same name as the folder as I created. So in this case, shared coordination space. Then we choose the folder that we're going to use. So under project files in the shared location, there's the folder we created earlier. And just pick create. That then creates that coordination space. And as you see it listed here. So now let's create a team's coordination space so that they can coordinate their own work. So under MEP, we have an MEP coordination space. I'll give the name. And as long as we've got the folder selected, we just choose create. This space will allow the individual team to coordinate their own work. And now we see both those shared spaces created. I would normally go then to create each individual team's coordination space. At any time, we can deactivate the space if it's no longer needed. So the next option is to go into models. So under models, this is where we can actually see it calculating the clash results. When the model coordination spaces have been created in the model section, you'll see the models will be uploaded into those folders. So let's change the MEP coordination space to the shared space. In here, we'll see all the models that each team has uploaded into that folder. We could, if we wanted to, filter the files that are viewed here. We can use all models, my models, or clashes with my models. Here you can see each of the clashes for each of those files. So what we're going to do now is have a look at just two of these models together. Let's choose HVAC and Structural. Now we see these models aggregated together. And we can zoom around, pan around using the powerful tools in the Autodesk Viewer. Now if we need to add or remove models as we go, we can use this button here. We're going to leave these two models as they are, but we're going to save the view. And this is because we may want to get back to this view at a later date. So well, first of all, we give it a title. So I'm just going to actually list what we've actually got in this view. So structural and HVAC. Here we can actually change the privacy. So in this case, this view at the moment is just for myself. Obviously, giving a description helps us know exactly what's in here. And save that view. And we can get back to that at any time. So let's close that view down. And if we go to the view section, it'll be listed in there. And as I said, this is a private view, so only I can see that view. Now, if I open up that view, we can update the view if needed and change the privacy. So in this case, we'll set it to published. And now what we'll do is when we come out of here, you'll see it's been updated with a privacy as a global. So let's have a look now at the clashes. So here we get a table of active clashes. So these, this is a structure of all the four models clashed against each other. Now we can see the clashes. So let's choose one of these. And this will be the clash between electrical and HVAC. And it creates the view automatically for us and lists all of the clashes. 
Now we can change the grouping of these clashes by object, system name, or type name. So if we choose one of these clashes, it'll actually zoom straight to it. So in this case, this is actually one clash, but it's four clashes with one other model. So if we look at this, we actually see a cable tray that's actually cl clashing with four pieces of ductwork. And that's why we see 86 clashes rather than the 57 we had before. Now I can choose whether I want this to be an issue or not. If I chose not an issue, my name would be actually marked against this as being the person to say it wasn't an issue. In this case, it is clearly an issue. So I'm going to create an issue. So when we create the issue, we have the choice of keeping the title or adding to this title. The status is set to open and it will automatically label this as a coordination clash issue and automatically add a description. So here I'm going to assign this to Maria. We could, if we wanted to use a location, we give a due date. And if we wanted to, we could give a start date. So I choose today. We can also specify a root cause. Cause Design coordination would be the root cause for me this time. We get a nice little snapshot, which is exactly the view that we're looking at at the particular time. I can then add comments before I actually submit this to Maria. Maria would then get a notification that there is an issue and she'll be able to open this issue and change the design. Once we've submitted the issue, if we change the view to the document management section, we can pick issues and see that issue listed. If I select it, I can actually modify this because I actually submitted it and I'm the project manager. I can actually add more, more comments. Other than that, only myself and Maria will be able to see this. Once we've opened up Navisworks and we've installed the coordination issues add-in, we can then go to that part of the menu and choose open models. Now, rather than open the models locally, we'll be prompted with which account we need to open this from and then the project name. So this is actually opening our models from the cloud. We then choose our coordination space and then we can choose which models we want to open up. In this case, I'll open all of those in the space. It will remind us to create an NWF file so that it will always bring in the latest release. When the file is open, we've got all the normal viewing tools to allow us to move around the model inside Navisworks. Now part of this add-in is the manage issues option. So if I select this, it'll actually bring in the issues dialog box. And here we see the original issue. And we also see it because we've got the display push pins and we can select that push pin. Now we've got all of the models open here. We would normally just open the two that we're interested in, but we can see all of the information about that issue. Now let's do our own clash detection inside Navisworks. Navisworks clash detection is extremely powerful. Here we can actually create a number of clashes. First of all, we'll give it a name. So we're going to do a clash between the electrical and the structural. Once we've given it a name, next thing we do is actually select what we're going to do the clash between. So in this case, I'm going to do it from the whole of the structural model and within the electrical model, I'm just going to choose cable trays. I then select what settings I want. In this case, we're just going to do a hard clash with a minimum tolerance. Once we've run the test, it'll then come back with how many clashes it's found between those objects. 
So these are clashes, six of them in all. And each one I select, it will actually show me in the view. So once I've selected the clash, let's, uh, let's zoom out so we can see the whole of the area that was affected. And here we can see our clash between the two objects. Now what I'm going to do in here is actually create another issue. So we just use the same issues option, close the original one down and pick the create issues button. We then select where the issue is. That will give us a push pin that's also available then inside BIM Collaborate. Then we've got exactly the same information that we've got from the, uh, from the clash issue. The difference here, we have to specify a specific uh, description simple enough to do and we can then assign it to someone in the project here we'll choose auto again we can specify location and due date and start date and if wanted we could actually choose a root cause and again it gives us a little picture showing the location and I would normally add a comment as well. Once we've closed that issue down, we'll actually see the two issues highlighted here. When we go back into the Autodesk Construction Cloud, making sure we've got the correct project, and then choosing Issues, you'll see the issues listed. So it doesn't matter whether it's come from Navisworks, or originally from the construction cloud, it'll be listed for that particular project. So that's model coordination with inside BIM coordination and Navisworks.